What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, we have a very special episode today. We have Joe Angelo on, who has been an MIC member for a long time now, uh, and I know he's a club favorite. So, Joe, thank you for coming on. Hell yeah. I'm glad excited to, to have there, you, man. Brother. Yeah. Dude, I know you, Harry's always talked so highly of you, so I'm glad to actually finally get to put a face to the name and, and actually talk to you. So that's cool. But I guess to start it out, so how did you find MIC? And like, how did you kind of like, like get into trading and how did you find us and, and go from there? Yeah, so um, for me, the, the journey started a long, you know, well, not a long, long time ago, but uh, in a galaxy far away, but um, <laughs> uh, it, started, awesome. it started like in... 2011 in 2011 you know I mm-hmm. I, I came from a, a you know like a blue collar family my dad's a truck driver um mm-hmm. you know you worked hard to make money you you know yeah. I was never yep. taught that you could use money to make yep. money <laughs> and yep. and so I did a lot of you know hard work when I was young and 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 everything I'm 47 now but um but anyways, I, I, I came across, you know, who Tim Sykes, you know, some ad on internet yeah. or email or something. I don't know how the heck of it was. And, you know, um, you know, started looking into the trading, you know, you know, what he was doing. And then, you know, it kind of led to another service that he, he yeah. was, you know, kind of touting on um, profitly. And at, at the time, I, I liked it because, you know, the guy that 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 I switched to was, you yeah. know, uh broadcasting his screen and, and yeah. the warnings and you know i just felt like oh man I, i'll get a, a better in-depth you know view of what's going on and you know kind of learn about this i always knew of investing but i never you know knew about you know actual day trading mm-hmm. and so um so that's kind of you know what got me got me started and then i remember my first trade was like on uh nvda and it was like <laughs> three bucks back then and yep. i fucking you know, I, I had transferred five five thousand into my account, and I used it all, and I made eight hundred bucks like right off within seconds. And I'm Shit, like, you got to be fucking kidding me! You know, this <laughs> is pretty good for a trade, man. Yeah, that's hell good. yeah. I was, you know, I was a teacher at the time, and and, and my salary as a teacher was thirty two thousand yep. a year. Yeah, and that, that <laughs> was after, dude. That yep. was after fifteen years of of teaching. Yep. You know, so my girlfriend does, man. Teaching. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend does. And she'll like see like a day of trading. She's like, what in God's name? Like, what the fuck am I doing? Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's funny as hell. So sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So so anyways, it started to kind of lead from there. And that was during the summer. And so I traded throughout the summer and I was, you know, watching the, the that chat room at that time. And you know, I couldn't discern between alerts and and trading for yourself, mm-hmm. but that, but I was starting to get the idea of dip buying and things like yeah. that. And it was working for me. But then not, mostly, for me, you were mostly a long trader at that kind of time trading. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're trading more dip buying. You're buying breakouts. You're doing that sort of stuff. Uh, yep. NASDAQ, that's kind of how you're kind of running it at, at that time. Yeah, because I was like a, a, a monkey on a cu- cupcake and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> so I traded like, you know, with my small account, like 50 times in the first day, you know, I was in out, in out, in out, and then the next day, and all month long, and the next thing I know, I get you know pattern day trade, day, yep. day trade. You know, you no longer have margin. You you know, <laughs> yep. so I was I've been there. locked out within like a, a few weeks of like a year, like a year, you know, handcuffs on. You no, know, you cannot have a margin account, um, and that was with Schwab, you know, at the time. <laughs> so. <laughs> I just didn't know anything about it. I thought you could just buy in, buy out, buy in, buy out. I didn't know about <laughs> cash settlement. I didn't know about yeah. anything. Yeah. So I did that too. Learned a lot about that. But then I got to the school year, you know, being a teacher, you know, I, I just, I didn't realize like, oh, wow, I'm not going to be able to do this, you know, because my full focus, uh, you know, teaching starts really early in the morning. You, you, you know, you have to be focused on kids. You can't just look at your phone or, Yep. you know, and, and do it, you know, so I, you know, I struggled with that for about two or three months. And then I, and I said, I, I've got it. I, I can't really even do it. So from 2012 until, you know, like 2015 or so, I just, I, you know, I may, may have had a couple of trades a year, yep. you know, and I tried to do it during the summer, but then I had other things going on. I just didn't get back into it. But I knew it was always something that I wanted to do. I wanted to learn more about and and 
I, I was kind of passionate about it at that time. I, I, I loved it. Um, but then the, the room that I was with, you know, kind of turned more into a short room, yeah, um, yeah. a shorting room. And uh, the, the, the guy that was running it, he's very good. He's down here in Florida now, but, um, and, and you guys know him, but, uh, yeah, but it, it's it's just, uh Mike Spinoza, right? Yeah. Mike Spinoza. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I love, yeah. I love Mike, bro. Yeah, I love Mike. Guy. He's a good guy. Mad, he's a savage, mad respect for that guy. Oh yeah. I, dude. I just, he's, he, yeah. He's an animal. Yeah. He's a good yeah. dude. <laughs> animal. I, you know, I like him for other things too, you know, just as, you know, view on, health and you know the, the way he... i talk to him about that stuff all the time about like the yeah uh, like ha- like biohacking and stuff i was just talking to him the other day about it i think it's super interesting yeah it's cool yeah yeah uh, good, good shit sure. it's funny yeah but go ahead sorry yeah so um but but i knew that I, you know i was a long trader you know and I, I i like you know to do long and to be honest with you uh you know he's the one who mentioned bow he said if you're gonna follow anyone on twitter or instagram yep. you gotta follow this guy and this was like back in yeah, this is probably back in 2014, 2015. Yeah. Yeah. I started following Bao. And then somehow I, I, I got Harry's Twitter on, on top of that. And then I was really following Harry. And he was going through a time of, I, I don't know what years it, it was, because there was a long span of time there that I didn't do trading a lot. But I just really locked into what he was saying. He was refining his craft. He was convicted. And like that pumped me up every time, you know, like I, I locked into that. And then, and then I started, you know, seeing the advertisements for MIC. And I yeah. said, you know, I told myself that, you know, I think this is where I want to be. This oh. sounds like, you know, the place where I'm going to ha- have a life, lifelong learning and, and, and can commit to this and, and really learn for the long term. Yeah. Yep. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what led me to MIC. That's yeah, cool. So you kind of found MIC, I guess, more so through me than, um, well, you found it out through Bow, but you also started following me. Um, yeah. Because I know that we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of talks about, you know, certain stuff and um, just longing and in general. And um, how, so how would you say that you're kind of doing now? So, I mean, we have your kind of story of like, you know, in and out of like different kind of chat rooms and in and out of whatever. Um, and like, so maybe you could talk about like how you've been now, like any, any struggles, any stuff like that, because I mean, we really wanted to have these type of podcasts too, as like a, more of a, a kind of, um, you know, I guess like mentor session as well as like, you know, people who are on the come up and just lessons and, and, you know, kind of learning and stuff like that. So maybe you could kind of talk about like how you're doing now, like any struggles that James and I can maybe talk about things that we've been through or, you know, whatever. I mean, we can just shoot the shit and drink here all night. I'm fine with that. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> maybe we can, just, maybe, maybe we can uh, kind of fast. Come forward. on, guys. Cheers. Yeah, I know. On, I know. All right. I know this is the first time Come on. on. I, I, I usually never drink on these, but, you know, I opened one up for. For Joe, I feel like a fish I'm, out of water right now. I'm like, what's yeah. that alcohol? I don't know what I'm doing. We'll drink one for you, James. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Jeez. So we'll kind of <laughs> we'll kind of fast forward more so to uh, now. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. So so my trading now um, is, you know, a lot like I'm in a, uh, I feel like I'm in a conflicted zone. You know, in my trading, like I um there's a couple of things that I've, I've, you know, when I, when I started with MIC, um, you know, I was really learning a lot and there was a, there there was a lot of like breaking, breaking me into the, you know, to, to knowing what to do. I couldn't even find the hot chick at that time. I was struggling. I think I, you you probably don't remember. I do remember, dude. I, I like, I could not find it. I was like, well, what the, you know, what the hell? And then I saw all the shorts, (laughs) you know, talking about all theirs. And I'm like, well, uh, you know, the, the stocks that they were looking at and then, um, you know, you know, calling out lines and things like that. And I'm like, well, Oh, maybe that's line. I need to, you know, get in and br- it's going to break, f- break higher. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, like chasing no, no. broken stocks, like trying for a breakout of like an inner line, just hoping it would like, oh, keep yeah, going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, first, first red day, I, I hadn't studied completely yet. And, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Well, of course, I'm going to long at v- VWAP where it's breaking down. You know, that's the first, <laughs> yeah. you know, a nice entry. Yeah, yep. we've all been there, man. 
so I got past that and then and then I got to um you, you know I, identifying the stocks and and that that has been really helpful what I'm struggling with right now in my trading there's there's a couple of things you know I'm I'm that I'm that guy who's like you know, I, I have all the struggles you know um, you know and on multiple facets but um you know, you know the number one is uh probably like you know when, when, when I have an idea I, I have an idea on a lot of different longs, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing, and I don't, you know, sometimes I don't know, maybe, you know, Midtown is one of my, you know, tabs. And, and like, he, he says, you've got too many fucking charts on your top screen, bro. Get rid of some of those charts. But then it's like, I see, I see the setups in, in all of them, you know, it's yeah. like today I wrote, I wrote down, you know, you know, C, C R D F A T E R S B R T A N. Yeah. Uh, why uh, even clove i saw the dip and rip possibly coming um on those at, at the open and i couldn't execute on any of them no yeah. you know because i was fucking paralyzed yeah. and, and and like everything that aloha you know and austin talks about you know those types of you know uh psychological things uh you know really oh, yeah. really get to me and they, they freeze you they freeze yeah you. and freezing yeah, is a big yeah. thing and then i miss and then i and then some and then i'm fomoing in sometimes yeah. and it's like son of a bitch if i would have taken the original line that i saw that i should have yeah. taken i wouldn't be throwing my clipboard halfway across the room <laughs> and you because i see some charts for you man that are pretty that are very good actually like you have some times where you post one i'm like damn man like i'm happy for him like you catch a big chunk of moves sometimes and i love it you know, yeah. so it's like, you know, you know, deep down you have it. It's just these little things that are definitely like hindering you a little bit. Right. So I think as a, as a long bias, Harry, if you want to start and then I can follow up with that for this first problem and we can go from there. Yeah. Yeah. I think as far as, uh, so like, let's just go from like how you would normally set up a plan at the open, you know, like, um, you know, because like, to me, like I watch a lot of different stocks a day, like you know, we might have a, a random, like, well, first of all, what I do every single day, and I've been doing this for about two years now, is I take a piece of computer paper every single day, and every single stock that is mentioned in the MIC chat, I write it down. Doesn't matter if it's a first red day, doesn't matter if it's a whatever, I write it down because then I have a record of it. You know, I'm hawking the chat all the time. I'm paying attention to every single goddamn thing that's going on first thing that I want to do, right? Because later in the day, when I'm sitting here in the afternoon and I'm bored of shit and there's a setup that's kind of maybe subpar, I'm going to say to myself, okay, let me scan through all the rest of these stocks and maybe see if something's setting up just like you, right? You know, so I guess that's the first thing that I always want to do. I mean, having a lot of stocks is great, right? BBIG, that was mentioning to avoid earlier in the day. Later in the afternoon, like I didn't catch it, but it ended up popping, you know, going like 10%, right? That's something that you want to kind of look at. So for me, like it, it's not FOMO. It's just, I want to be looking at all the charts just to see what's kind of going on, just to see what's kind of moving. I mean, as far as the like missing shit at the open, the open is the most difficult time to trade. You know, pre-market sure. as a long trader, if you're in the hot chick stock pre-market, right? That That's a t time, like if you have a small account, you can make your day. So I mm -hmm. mean- that's that pre-market is a very, very good edge for longs. As long as we're in a stock that's doing consistent volume, you know, that's trying to break out or whatever, that's a kind of good time where you want to be in long, you know, at the open, it gets way more challenging and way more harder. Now, what I've been finding lately is that my biggest trades have been coming in the afternoon. They've been coming, you know, as we're about to go into after hours, or they've been coming in the afternoon right? Where we've had a stock that's kind of popped up midday, you know, SPRT, for instance, today popped up midday, hovered view up all day. And then at the end of the day, you know, during that kind of uh, long reversal time that Bao talks about, we get that big, big, big move, right? And so for a lot of people, their problem is that, you know, as a long trader, they want to go in and at the open, they're thinking, oh, this is the, the dip and rip. This is the time. This is the time, right? But on a day like today, I didn't see anything like that. I missed Jivo today. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to go crazy. I don't give a shit. I'm happy for the stock, right? Highly dilutive ticker. Probably shouldn't have ran that much. It did. That's okay for me. But I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to FOMO into Jivo when it's at $9 or whatever the, the, the price was only to get stuffed on lower, right? 
I got to say yeah. to myself, all right, this stock needs some time to reset. This stock needs some time. If Jivo wanted to run again, it would go, you know, underneath VWAP, start curling higher, you know, for that kind of high day clear out or high day push. That's something that you can kind of look for. But pay attention. If stocks move and they have a very, very big kind of first move, like a first kind of move, I'll always keep that on watch to see, okay, maybe this can have kind of a secondary push. And you look to get in on that secondary push rather than ran long some fucking random stock that is a broken stock, piece of shit, right? You don't want to be in those type of stocks. If yeah. I have a rule where if it's done something once, it can do it again. And that's what you want to be kind of looking for. Okay, SPRT has ran once. We know that this stock is a runner. It's highly manipulated. You know, it's a, it's a ticker that has been giving shorts trouble. Okay, that's something to keep on your main watch, right? Rather, you know, something that hasn't ran before that's broken, that's a piece of shit. You can take that off. Like that's not something that wants to be near the top of the list, right? That's just how I kind of see those type of struggles. Yeah. So I think for me, like, because I had the same issue for a long time where, especially as a short bias trader, because as long as, you know, you're looking for the hot chick, a short bias guy is like, we have low hanging fruit. We have day ones. We have, you know, first red days. We have all these different setups. And for a long time, I would end up hitting all the, I'd have like eight charts. I would hit them all, but with like small size and end up like making no money. Or I'd end up like, like you said, bowling into one and yeah. maybe taking a loss on it and all that stuff. So what kind of fixed that for me was, was two things. One, um, I just started looking, if I have more than like, like now I only have three charts on my screen. And if I have more than three stocks on watch, and that's for me, because I know for myself personally, I can watch three stocks and I can also trade three stocks with almost a hundred percent attention to either one. But you could only, maybe for you, it's only two, maybe for you, it's only one, you know, and I know guys who can do that with eight, like bow. So it's, if you got to find your rhythm and what stuff, how many you can watch. But for me, once it gets over three stocks that I'm watching, it gets down to my statistics at that point where I'm not a huge stack guy but I pay attention to the stocks that I've made the most money so, or the setups. So like if it gets down to eight names, I go, well, this stock has a, a little bit higher float than I like to, that I usually trade. My edge is like under 30 million float, less than 30% in, uh, in IO, you know, X, Y, Z, all that. And then that's how I start to just get rid of the other ones. So for you as a long, you kind of, I think it would make sense to look at where you make the most money and if all of your setups have like the same equal opportunity of working, then I would just start to kind of eliminate the ones that you're like, I might not, it's fine. Like this stock is like a higher price. I'm more focused and make more money on this setup. And once you swallow the pill of like, you're not going to nail every setup and you also don't have to, you will make 10 times more money because trying to nail every stock that's moving, you end up like fucking yourself. You end up screwing yourself over, barely making money on any of them. Whereas again, if you just focus on one in your niche, nine times out of 10, in my opinion, that's the one where you're going to bank the most. And it, like, it, like I said earlier, just, it takes a long time to understand that like, you don't have to hit everything. If you try to hit everything, you're going to miss all of it. And so just, like I said, I would find, I would find where your niche is, find what your best setups are. And sometimes you just need to zone in on them and forget the rest. If they hit, they hit, you can look back and say, ah, shit. I missed that, you know, like BBIG today. It was my main watch of the day. I nailed the initial move. was very excited about it. It popped back up to like 1040 or whatever it was. And I missed it because I was watching something else. And I just said, shit, you know, I could have chased it. I could have started shorting the red the line to for when I was going red, but I just said, shit, I missed it. I'm okay. You know, let's avert my yeah. attention back to the next stock and stay there. So I think those are the kind of things that like, long term will help you a lot yeah no i like that like if you look at all your trades if you take your your broker statements or your trade you know whatever you want to do you know look at the setups that are paying you the most you know are you making the majority of your money and things change i mean the market changes all the time but what type of setups are you making the majority of your money on you know if you're not confident pre-market you know don't keep trying pre-market and saying, well, pre-market's got to work one day. Pre-market's got to work one day, right? Like maybe you, and, and, you know, I mean, 
you know, because a lot of people have just been trying to do these pre-market longs for months now, and they're just still not getting it. So it's like, why do you keep doing this? You know, just say, okay, I'm not good at pre-market longs, drop your ego and just say, okay, I'm better at at afternoon, right? Or I'm better on stocks that are running this much percent or with this daily chart. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can kind of look at rather than just saying to yourself, um, you know, I need to keep doing this and keep trying and keep trying, you know, because I watch 10 to 12 stickers pop up uh, in the morning and there's only one that I'm going to be trading. So I'm like very selective pre-market. I'm very selective in general, you know, and that's something that a lot of people need to work on. Yeah. People get blinded by opportunity. I think like, look, one thing to recognize is like Alex, Alex makes a watch four tickers, but the bulk of his money usually comes from one. Like yep. if you look at his P and L's, I mean, he has four tickers on watch, but one ticker usually pays him out the most and the rest are just small scales. But I think people, I think people get blinded by the opportunity. Like you think I'm going to miss this setup. And it's like, Oh shit. That, it's like, why do people think that that setup's never going to happen again? Or that like, I would rather use my max size on a setup that's going to work than use 30% size on eight different tickers because I, it, it just, it's too stressful for me. Yeah. I and agree. Yeah. And Joe, like I said, I think I see a lot of your charts and like, I feel like when you're focused on a ticker, you get the meat of the move. I've seen them. I'm like, shit, this dude just, that's a Harry Haas long right there. That's fucking nice. You know, but it's like, if you just end up trying to shoot bullets at everything, then that's when I can, I guarantee your frustrations coming in. And that's, that's what you got to work to eliminate. And I think these little things really will help you. Like, Yeah. Kind of yeah. get rid of that. I, I find that I do that, you know, uh, well, it's when I miss it, you know, if I yep. hesitate, and when I miss for yep. me, that's the trigger. And then, yep. and sometimes, you know, I'll, you know, I go on a, a rampage over here. Harry knows I'm like, what the fuck, you know, yep. what, what, what the hell, you know, did I just do, but, um, you, you, you know, I, I, I feel like right now my, my, um, you, you know, if, if a stock has high, you know, it's above VWAP, it's got high, steady, consistent volume, um, you know, and it's really conforming to the lines. Those are the ones that, you know, if, if I'm presetting my orders, those are the ones that are, are hitting and yep. I need to be sizing in, but you know, and that leads, leads me to the other problem that I'm having yep. is that I'm a single size trader. I'm a, a one in one out and I don't scale necessarily. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I do some, sometimes maybe, you know, one or two, you know, uh, entries, but, but I don't, I, I haven't, I haven't learned to size in on my best setups and I, I think it comes from, you know, just want, wanting to, I, I want to be a CPT right now. I want to be yep. consistently prof, yep. profitable right now. And other things in my life lead me to that, you know, yep. uh, like Harry knows I, I, I want, I, I don't ever want to work for another boss again in, in my <laughs> life. I've, I've been, I've been literally hurt, destroyed, career destroyed by yep. bosses and I, I i can't like and and it's hard at 47 you know to to be at that point where you you uh you, you know you want something so bad you know it, it can you know create freedom for you you know not just money you know monetary freedom but just you know freedom from you know the stress you yeah, know. the world yeah yeah and, Absolutely, and so I, I get locked into that and then but that works against me you know, yeah. it definitely works against me. Another thing that works works against me is like I, I I'm <laughs> I'm close to PDT, you yeah. know, and I want to get over that. The closer I get, the tighter the tighter clinch I get on my sizing. Um, and the next thing I know, the AC goes out in the home, and then I have to <laughs> you know dump yeah. fifteen hundred bucks into that, and then I, and then I'm down, you know, back to you know, you know, a couple thousand from being PDT, and I'm like, oh, son of a gun, it took me all this time to get there. Oh, I'll put more size on. Oh shit. You know, what the hell yeah. am I doing now? I'm wanting it so bad. I just lost more. And then I'm back to some small size, you know, super, yeah. super small size. Oh, and, and it's a frustration. I, I just, want I to think you're a, this. yeah, go ahead. Here, go ahead, Harry. Go ahead. Fuck oh, man. My phone just started ringing again. Fuck. Um, hey. I, can, I, can no, no, this I, can... um, I just wanted to kind of cut into this where, you know, a simple mind hack, because a lot of people like, once in a while I'll post like PL and you know, maybe, maybe Joe has like seen it. Like I'm in a couple of tab groups and like, I'll, I'll, I'll do it there. I'm not really a big kind of show off or like type of ego guy, but for me, 
I, instead of, instead of, you know, having the mindset of, oh, my AC broke, I need to fix this. Oh, this, I need to do that. Right. I'm saying, okay, all I want to do is just keep following the process. So, you know, my name's Joe and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, take the next week. I'm going to, I'm going to look at all my trades. I'm going to see what type of trades paid me out the most, you know, take that printer behind you, that Canon printer behind you and print out all your, all, yeah, take those charts and print out all your best setups, right? Now you have a blueprint to say, okay, you know, you can even go on Microsoft Paint and roughly draw something out. I mean, you know, it's pretty easy. Once you kind of look at what you've been making money on, it's easy. And then you're just saying, okay, I want to fix that AC. Well, I need to follow the process and do this, right? Don't worry about some line at the open if that's not what has been making you money, right? If pre-market has not been making you money, say, fuck it. I'm going to sleep in every day and be well rested for the opportunity and the times that are making me the most money, right? That is what takes you to that freedom level, right? The freedom level is being able to say to yourself, okay, you know, for someone like me, I used to just trade the morning and now I just sit here all day. And, you know, if I see something in the afternoon, I'll take it. If I see something in the whatever, I'll take it. But I'm waiting for things to set up, right? I'm not saying, oh, I need to pay for this. I need to pay for that. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to wait and be as patient as I can for a really good setup. And then after that, you know, I'll get paid out of it and whatever. But I'm not even really focused on PL during the trade. I'm saying, okay, is there, is there a seller at 1940 that I need to be aware of? Is there a seller at 1980? Then after that, I'm like, wow, it's a big trade. Wow, nice. Mm -hmm. right? But the initial thought process, because there, there is a difference. When I go into a trade and I'm like, wow, this is going to be a big one. I'm going to bank so fucking big. Those are going to be my biggest losses, right? My biggest wins are when I don't have to think about it. If you have to hesitate and you miss something, say, okay, that trade wasn't for me. Right. That, that, mm -hmm. that shit was not for me. Okay. You know, I hesitated today on Jivo. I missed it, but I was able to say, okay, I'm going to wait for a really good setup that I know that's going to pay me out later in the day. Right. And I had to watch an hour of Jivo continuously and continuously going up and then apply the same patience that I had on that initial Jivo kind of breakout entry trade to a new one. And it's just saying to yourself, okay, I need to apply the same amount of patience on every single ticker. I have a, a patience rule. I have an hour rule where if something goes up insanely, insanely crazy and halts, okay, I got to wait an hour. I need to wait for the stock to cool down and then see if we can do a second leg higher. There's all these little FOMO rules. Like we all deal with it. We all have FOMO, but it's creating rules around your FOMO and it's creating rules. So you, you know, if you hesitate, say, okay, I'm going to take a 30 to 45 minute break. I'm going to, I'm going to take a piss, come back and, you know, reevaluate oh. stuff like that can make you a better trader in my opinion agreed i i think your i think your emotional stuff too like your emotional journey will make your trading skin a lot thicker and i think it you know as you become like a cpt and like you start gaining that that perspective and you get there you're gonna like you appreciate it much more because you've been through like the the heartache of it so i think that's one thing to never think of that emotional like part of it as like a, a negative either because we've all been there we've all had that kind of shit to deal with while we're learning to trade and like how it affects you so never feel like you're alone in that because trust me i i dealt with it I, everyone has it at a point and you know like you said you're a teacher right so i think the way to deal with like your max sizing issue is the way i started to deal with it was i just stopped caring about necessarily like like i think the term max size is kind of funny i think people think every trade is a shit trade unless it's max size, which is just not true. Like max size, like in my opinion, like if you, like, again, I model myself like trading, try to be off like Alex. So like when Alex is max size, that's because it's a fucking setup. That's like, he's like, Oh shit, this is about to happen. I've been on the phone with him when he's like slamming on, on a short, on a first red day. Like the, uh, I think it was a test, the first red day or, or no, it was the coronavirus sector. And when he's full size, it's like, because it's fucking on, but every trade up until then, it's just like, just because he locates 10,000 shares or whatever doesn't mean he's using that. He might only use 2,000, but still make 2,000 bucks or whatever. So I think the term max size confuses people. Like max size is not for every single trade. It's max size is just what you make of it. Like I could say my max size is 10 million shares, but oh, what's weird, I'm only using 1,000. So it's, <laughs> it's just, it's all mental. It's all in your head. So you kind of got to stray away from that and get to the idea of grounding yourself to a level. Like you said, you're a teacher, right? Teachers that 
They are the most, they should be the most respected people in the country, but they don't get paid the most, right? It's me and my girlfriend have this conversation all the time. And a teacher, let's say at the end of the year, after tax, you get 32K. I mean, now think about it in your each and individual trade. One trade does not need to make you fucking $5,000. doesn't need to make you $1,000. Yes, that's the overall goal. But if every trade adds up compounding, you're just going to make the same amount of money long-term regardless. So like, uh, for example, one of my friends is getting into trading and he was, uh, he does, he does carpentry and, you know, he loves carpentry, but he doesn't make as much money as he wants. And his mindset is perfect because he's like, all I have to do, he's like, my life would be made if I could make 200 a day. He's like, I'm not going into it thinking I'm going to make 200 a day. He's like, that's just, I could live so comfortably off that. And he's the way he's thinking of it is like, all right, well, if Monday I take one trade and I, I, maybe I only, maybe his max size is 200 shares. He's like, what if I only get a hundred shares on, but I make 50 bucks. Cool. The next day you make 70 bucks. And the next day you make 200 bucks. And the next day you make 500, whatever. It's, that's how I think of it in terms of like, I just want to consistently be green because I've realized at the end of five days of five trading day period, if one day, like my PLs are funny because like Monday I might only make like 600 bucks. Right. But then like Tuesday, I could make like 1800 and then Wednesday I could make like 300. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it really is what Harry said. You just come in every day. Once you know the process that works for you, all you do is your job is to stick to it and whatever it spits out. Like the way Alex can make 700,000 on Monday and then make 500 on Tuesday and walk away from the screens and just be like, all right, I'm going to go to steak. Like that's what you need to kind of, that's very drastic, but those are the, that's where your, your goal should be is it's just, you follow the process. Like Harry said, you print out your charts, you know what makes you the most money. You stick to that. And if on Monday it spits you out a a million dollars and Tuesday it spits you out $10, you did your best to stick to the process and you walked away with good risk management. And it's it's, it's easy to get drowned with them. Like I, I got off Twitter actually for a long time and I still really don't go on it much because I got intoxicated and like I focused too much on the profits and I was like, well, if I'm only making a thousand dollars and this guy's making $10,000, like I'm a loser. Like that's, that's stupid, Yeah, you know, but the reality is like, yeah, life's expensive and like there's shit going on around you. And like, yeah, I want to buy a fucking Lambo. I want to buy a fucking nice watch. I want to go on vacations. But the reality is like, you know, your time will come. It's just comes to now showing up, doing your job, sticking to the process and letting the process, the profits kind of spit out, you know, and it's, it's not easy to be in a position where you need to make money, which is why Bao says he doesn't recommend it. But I would, I would kind of take a, a wider stance and a different approach of like, hell, if I only make 50 bucks today, I know if I stick to the process, I can make 500 bucks tomorrow. You know, it, yeah. it's just, that's how I approach it. The thing is, is that like, if I could talk to, if I could talk to myself, like on the come up when I was in, let's say, you know, I was even doing well in university, but like, let's say I talk to myself, let's say, you know, hypothetically, I'm, you know, I'm talking to myself when I'm learning, whatever, right? The biggest mind fuck is that if you told yourself, all right, just stop chasing, stop FOMOing into things, be patient, just allow things to emerge and just wait and just, you know, if you can just develop that level of patience to really say to yourself, okay, you know, random X, Y, Z pops up. You do not need to long into that, right? Right. Something falls down, you know, a similar situation, right? We had BBIG kind of go lower and then go 11 point or go two or three points higher, right? You know, that's not my my setup. That's not the shit that I do. You know, it, the biggest mind fuck is that you're probably like two or three issues away from being a consistently profitable trader, right? Like I know we talk a lot, you know, right. But the things that are holding you back is that you're, you know, you should be worried about missed consistency and not about missed opportunity. And that's a quote from, you know, I believe Dr. I love that. Wrote that to Alex. That's what you need to be worried about. Say, okay, miss something in the market. You know, that's okay. I miss all the fucking time. Literally miss all the time. You know, it's like a stuff move, right? You get stuffed on. It's the price action that comes after the stuff move that really matters. Mm-hmm. Does that thing tank? Does that sucker do an offering and go lower? Or does that keep grinding up and grinding up and grinding up and stop you out as a short or, you know, continue to go higher for you as long? It's that type of stuff. It's the mind fuck is that what's holding you back is just your ability to just 
you know, let go of whatever the fuck happens, you know, let go of everything that has happened and, you know, start fresh and start new every single day and start fresh and start new after you've missed a move, right? Say to yourself yeah. every single day, I could be a consistently profitable trader if I don't get angry, if I don't get emotional after I miss something, if I'm not, you know, chasing a random stock because it went up, if I'm not, you know, just shooting bullets and fucking spraying everywhere like I got a right. machine gun, right? It's stuff like that that gets you on the right track and gets you profitable, right? You know, I know you, you have some, some really, really, really good charts, right? So how did you do that? And how can you repeat that, right? How do you get into situations like that? For some people that I know, it's I've lost, the person has lost six times in a row. And on the seventh time, they're like, you know what? Fuck it. This is finally set up. I'm just holding it. And they get that end of bigger trade. So how mm -hmm. can you eliminate those five to six prior trades in order to get that seventh big one and just make that seventh big one your first trade? That type of stuff is what is what has allowed me. You know, I, I, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about this podcast today, yeah. trading earlier. I talked to James before and there was a stock that was setting up for me. I don't know the name. Um, and I, you know, it, it rushed to a level and it got there too quick for me. So I said, you know what? This is a bit too quick for me. This stock needs to take a break before it can go higher. So it kind of faded off a little bit. And then it kind of grinded higher and it got to the level the way that I wanted it to. So I started to take some. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, this is what I want to see. This is, I told myself what I wanted to see. I waited for it and then I got paid for it. And that is my type of trading. That's what I love. I want to see this do this at this support line and then I'll be able to take the trade. I self-talk before I take things all the time or else as a long trader, I don't think you'll make it. I want to see this happen at this level or I'm out, right? I want mm -hmm. to see it break through this 25 level right away and get to 25, 20, 25, 30, right? That's what I want to see. But if we struggle at 25, 10, 25, 08, I'm taking the $25 off, right? Didn't break that line with authority. So I'm yeah. talking to myself about my selling. I'm talking to myself about my buying and I'm saying what I want to see before I enter a trade. And that is what, in my opinion, it's just that self-talk, that self-awareness that has really helped mm -hmm. me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Harry. I think that's awesome. And I think, I mean, we are coming up on our kind of our, whoops, I just dropped my phone. We are coming up kind of on the, the time limit here. And, you know, I guess the last thing I just wanted to add for Joe would just be that, you know, I hit a point where I emotionally was just like so stressed out about trading at one point, like early on where I would look at myself in the mirror and be like, dude, what are you fucking doing? Like, you know what it takes. Like where, you know, Harry and I like kind of gave you like some small blueprints and stuff and you know, it is up to you to follow, but like, it just, it hit this point for me. I remember, dude, I remember crying. I remember thinking like, dude, I can do this. Like, I know I can. It's just yourself yeah, getting in the way. Yep. You're just getting in your I've own been way. And two years or so, you know, and, yep. or, or, or going on two years. And I know, I, I, I feel like I know what to do. I know yep. what to do. And then I beat myself up over it, you know, big time. Yep. Dude, when I get on a trader call with people, I, and sometimes when they're just, they're, bitching they're crying like I can't you know I'm struggling with this and I just said dude sometimes it takes really looking at yourself in the mirror and like I used to be like dude you're a I would be myself up kind of like not in a bad way but like, dude if you can't follow these guidelines then this is not your career so I had to take a step back and think like do you want this to be a career yes or no if the answer is yes it's time to kind of like man up like nut up a little bit or woman up if you're a woman and follow the process that is laid out in front of you by other consistent profitable traders because mm -hmm. if, if you can't it's going to be a long hard journey right and like i yeah. love giving the tough the tough love because that's that's what i got from like alex and bow too and like you know it's just start kind of finding reasons to follow the process other than reasons to get mad at yourself you know it's just i think once you kind of eliminate those personal stuff and i know you can man i know you can do it you know you're a smart guy you have a nice level head it's just Net from now on from yeah. today on it's time to eliminate that emotional and just like harry said man it's that seventh trade you're always looking for that next trade those six up to it who the fuck cares if it's a good trade yeah. if it's a bad trade whatever but you're always looking for that next one that's gonna be gonna be the hitter so you know maybe i would love to actually i think we should have joe back on even like a month or two and let's see kind of how you're progressing oh, yeah. from there and yeah i think that'd be really cool 
Hey, cool. Yeah, Thanks. I appreciate hey. it, guys. Hey. You know, I mean, of like, uh, you, you know, MIC has been just, you know, uh, and, and you got you guys know, you know, a couple of years or a year and a half ago, I went through, you know, kind of a personal life crisis yeah. thing. And and just the fact that the MIC community was there for me, especially you guys, you know, and uh, James, Everyone. I'll never forget, you know, you you sending me in, you know, a couple of articles just to read and that helped me out so much. But oh, yeah, no. but but beyond beyond all that, you know, it's like, um, you know, I, I feel like I've you know, like I, I, I'm at that point where. You know, I started, you know, back, back in, I think it was 2019, um, when, it, when I joined April and then the December before that I had 8,000 in my account, you know, and I grew, yeah. I've grown it, I've grown it to 2024. 20, I'm at 24 right now. Yeah. And I know that's not a significant, you know, pace, but more than at, most people can do whatever. It, 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 it's a small pace and it's can always, you know, going forward, but I think yeah, obviously exactly what you're saying, you know, I, I, I have to, uh, you know, I, I really have to treat this like a job, you know, I have to, um, you know, I, I have to, I, I, I have to, you know, execute correctly, you know, and follow Absolutely. the process to a T, you know, to get, to get there. So yeah, and yeah. I would look forward oh, yeah, to come back on, you know, oh, you, yeah, man, I'd love that. I, you know, I mean, a challenge for you, like, you know, so you've grown your account from, let's say, eight grand to, to 22 grand. And um, one thing that you can do is that, you know, take take the trades that have made you the most money and DM them to me. Right. You know, so my challenge for you, DM me 10 trades, dates, entries, exits, you know, DM me your biggest 10, 20 trades and I'll go through them and I'll help you kind of make a process and, you know, I'll tell you what I kind of see and, you know, we can help kind of develop a process and kind of, and when we have you on in a month or two, you know, let, let us know how it's been going. And like that. you know, that's something that I'll commit to. I'll say that I'll kind of help you uh, develop that and we can kind of go over and then, um, you know, we can talk about it and talk it over, you know, how's that sound? Hell yeah. That's, that sounds awesome. Word, I love it. So that's awesome, man. I mean, that's all like right. So we have a plan. Jesus, we have a nice plan for you, Joe. We're gonna get you there. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. So thank you again for coming on, and I honestly appreciate you being personal and and letting people kind of into your journey. So thank you again, and uh, we'll look forward to having you on a second time. Yeah, thank you guys too, man. Of course, appreciate man. Of course. you both. Yeah, love it. <laughs>